Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we are talking about how to jumpstart your bike. <laughs> that sounds so. Previously, I've done a video on how to jumpstart your bike. If your bike won't start in the driveway, you got your car, you got jumper cables, you got all that stuff. But what if you're on the road? What do you do? A jump pack. Duh. Today we are going to take a look at two different jump packs, but they're kind of the same. I'll explain more in a second. For the purpose of this video, I am gonna order a NOCO GB40 off of Amazon, and we're gonna compare that unit to the new jump pack, semi-new jump pack that Harley-Davidson has come out with. So this is the NOCO that I'm gonna order, but it looks insanely similar to one that you can find right here on Harley-Davidson's website, but just so happens, I'm gonna be able to put my hands on one of those today. I'm gonna to compare a couple things like what comes in the package, how they work, and on top of that, I have a very special accessory you can only get through NOCO. I'm gonna order one of those too. I'll show you what they are. Let's go. Now the unit itself, We'll check out in just a minute, but the actual adapter that I'm really focusing on right now is GBC009. This is what's gonna make this whole thing really easy. But depending on your model, you might not even need that. You might just need the jump pack. Let's get to the shop and I'll explain more. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John Max, and I'm a highly trained unprofessional right here at Chad Uchi Harley Davidson. And on this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. So if you want to learn more about Harley Davidson, you should hit the subscribe button right now. We'll check out what is in the Amazon version NOCO. We'll check out the Harley version. And in just a few minutes, we'll look at what's in that little adapter box. I'm gonna be a little more careful with the Harley version because I have no intention of buying this. So I've got to box it up and make it look pretty. I'm gonna be re-watching this unboxing so that I can repackage it all nice and pretty as a matter of fact. Both units do come with a carrying pouch, user guides, the unit itself, which we'll look at really, you might notice why I picked to compare these two units. Oh, they are both IP65 as a matter of fact. That's kind of cool. That's water resistant and you notice that my version is a car and truck. Biggest difference, these giant clamps that make for attaching to a motorcycle battery, kind of difficult. Harley's version for the win with the very thin clamps for motorcycle batteries. Both come with a cigarette lighter adapter to plug in the included USB cable to charge the unit with. All right, I am about to install this lead. I'll install this on my bike in just a second, but before I tell you guys that it works, I wanna double check and make sure no matter which version you have, it does in fact plug directly into Harley's version and the straight up NOCO version. This harness attaches directly to the battery with the ring terminals and will plug directly into either of the jump packs. Not all models do you need that. Some models are really easy to get to the battery anyway. Let me demonstrate. A 2005 and earlier Dyna. The battery is right back behind this chrome cover. The battery positive terminal can be reached with a regular clamp. Even the giant one that comes with the NOCO version, this ground can be connected to anything that's, well, attached to the bike really. Oh, God. 06 and later Donna's with a Phillips head screwdriver. You can remove the side cover off of the bike, pull the battery out a little bit, and attach clamps to the terminals. Older soft tails like this one do require a flathead screwdriver to remove a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt right there. But depending on what seat's been added to it, it might even be a 5 16 Allen or some other tool. Either way, the terminals are easily accessible once the seat's off, but you still need a tool to get the seat off. Touring bikes are by far the easiest, attaching the battery positive straight to the starter motor and the ground to whatever bolt you can find. See, that starter bolt right there is attached straight to battery positive. Plenty of space in there. 
to get the clamp to line up. That said, the clamp version that comes with the Harley version jump pack is definitely easier to get to attach to everything that I've used those clamps to attach to. Don't forget to put your little rubber piece back on. The short of it is, for the most part, you're gonna have to remove little bits and pieces of your bike to get it to jump off, unless you have a touring bike. Some of them are more difficult than others. The most difficult easily being the V-Rod and, well, the new 18 and later soft tails like my bike. Enter this harness. I'm gonna install it on my bike and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. See how there's just no way to get space enough to get a jumper cable down here? Or definitely not gonna go over there to the, well really all you need is the positive because any of these bolts anywhere would suffice for a ground. Even just to put this piece on, I have to disassemble this bike more than I wish I had to. All that just to get this thing out of there. It clamps right here, right here, on the bottom here, so. You know, get that out of the way now, I can actually reach the positive terminal to put my harness on. I should add while I'm messing with my battery positive terminal, my ground wire is disconnected, so I don't have to worry about arcing across anything. That was absolutely the worst thing I've ever had to do in my life. And I'm glad I never have to do it again. Well, until a battery change jump started, I won't need to do all that crap again. I just ran the timer for all of that. It actually took 10 minutes just to do the positive. That's how long the camera was on. I have to put the actual tray cover back in before I mount the battery negative. Let me show you the progress. Battery positives are all attached right here and now covered by the cover. In here I have the front clip with the arrow pointing to it. I have the rearmost clip, another arrow, and the bottom clip all done. Now I can run the battery negative up outside of here. This little area here will keep anything from positive side touching the negative because anytime you're messing with the battery you want to make sure you're not crossing over the opposite terminal with a with any sort of wire it will eventually rub through and if there's a fuse it'll blow it if it's not fused it's just going to arc until the terminals melt everything gets hot fire ensues your bike is destroyed it might be a little excessive but you get the idea batteries are pain. That's all there is to it. I did find a place for the lead that requires no tools to get to and it's not dangling out. I just have to remove the dipstick, pop this cover off, and I'll be able to pull the lead out and get some space. You'll notice a little bit of tape right here because unfortunately the little weather cap doesn't stay on very well at all. So I did add a little bit of tape. Hopefully no water gets in there. I would like to mention though that you might notice that the wires coming off of this are eight gauge. That's significantly larger than what's on a regular battery tender lead. It's very important. You can't just do this with just anything. You're sending a lot of power to that battery. It's important to have the right size wire. The extra adapter did come with this little piece. It does have a fuse right here and it's basically, will plug directly into this adapter on this end and then a regular battery tender lead like we're used to seeing on this end. I don't really need that because my bike already has a battery tender on the main harness like most of the new Harley Davidsons do. In short, the version I got off of Amazon at the time of filming this video cost you about a hundred bucks. The adapter I think was an additional almost $20, so I'm right at about 120 bucks for my setup. The version from Harley-Davidson that's better suited for a motorcycle is 129. Travis, what are you beating up over there?
Thanks, man. Anyway, the other additional reason to potentially go with the Harley version outside of the clamps is, well, if there is a warranty issue, it's really easy to pop in the parts counter and utilize the one year warranty. Obviously, I don't expect there to be a problem, but you know, it's nice to, if you need warranty, to have it be an easy process where I can't speak on NOCO's warranty procedure. Maybe somebody down in the comments will know, but Amazon is a 30 day free return deal. After that, you'd have to deal directly with NOCO. I don't know how that'll go for you. But we've been using both versions of the box around the shop for a couple of months now. Pretty much everyone has one or the other and they work like a charm, pretty happy with it. And I'm definitely happy that I don't have to deal with this battery compartment except to replace the battery from this point going forward. Obviously, both units will be linked down in the description below if you'd like to do your own price comparison and check them out. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a big dirty thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button right here. If you haven't quite got your fix, there's a video right here and here. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.